Hello and welcome back to Town Yoga. Today I'm doing a tutorial, a little breakdown on Cobra Pose. And Cobra Pose is a great yoga pose that promotes good posture because it strengthens our upper back while kind of opening and stretching our chest. And that's a great way to counter some of the rounding that we tend to do when we're, you know, sitting and driving. So it's a really great posture to take regularly. And that's why I want to spend some time to really break down the pose, to start with a discussion about what's going on in Cobra, bring attention to some key parts of the body that you might want to be mindful and aware of so that you can take the pose healthfully. And then I'm going to cue us through it. So if you want to take a few Cobra poses today, we're going to do that as well. So you can just watch or maybe you want to clear a space to practice them a little bit. A yoga mat is wonderful, but not needed. You can just have a space on the ground where your hands have some good grip, and then you have a little bit of cushion underneath um, your hips or ankles and feet. So yoga mat, good choice, but you set yourself up any way you like. Okay, breaking down cobra posture, some things we want to be aware of. So in Cobra, you're belly down and you're pressing away from the ground. So a short demonstration, what it generally looks like, we're belly down and then we're pressing up away from the mat. So our hands are holding some of our weight in a traditional Cobra. You can do a Cobra without the hands and that's a really good way to test and kind of make sure that you're engaging the muscle, muscles of the upper back. But traditionally, we have our hands in contact with the mat and they're holding some of our weight. And so the first thing I want to talk about is keeping your wrist healthy in a cobra pose. Now, our wrist is a pretty complex joint because we have a lot of carpal bones here at kind of the base, the heel of our hand, that are going to meet the bones in the wrist. And we want to protect this bend because if it becomes inflamed, if we're putting a lot of pressure right down onto those carpals, and maybe you haven't practiced yoga and you're starting, and you do a lot of pressure right down into that spot, it might cause some inflammation. And then this area, this carpal tunnel right here with these bones is blood vessels and nerves run through there. And so inflammation might irritate those. So we want to avoid that, making sure that we're distributing the weight evenly throughout our hand in a cobra pose and then not just evenly but we're actually directing the force the opposite way that we're lifting up so in tabletop when you're in hands and knees you kind of press away from the mat and so the weight is distributed all throughout the hand but in cobra you're peeling yourself so you actually press the weight a bit forward in your hands. Energetically, you're pressing forward and that's what lifts you up and back. So kind of like you see babies do it when they're learning how to get up and they press back a little bit and hands come forward. That's what we're doing in Cobra. So when we come down into the pose, I'm going to talk about a few ways that I want you to make sure that your wrist is going to stay nice and healthy when we're taking our Cobra. And now you kind of know why. We really, really want to protect not inflaming that area. And now the next part of Cobra is going to be finding the engagement in our upper back. So in this Cobra pose, you might be able to hear, my dog just got up to drink some water. Buddy, come on over later. So in Cobra pose, we are engaging Tracting the muscles of the upper back and that is going to shorten those muscles. And when those shorten, our paired muscles, the chest muscles, get to lengthen or sometimes we talk about kind of opening them. And that's because when the back muscles contract, the chest muscles get to release and relax. That's our stretch reflex. That's a natural biological principle that we take advantage of here in yoga. And that does, like I said, kind of counter some of that rounding and sitting we do regularly. So we we're going to talk about finding that engagement, that muscular contraction. So you're going to feel a little stress on the upper back, but know that it's for a good reason. That conscious engagement and drawing back is going to open and stretch the chest a bit. All right, so let's come into our Cobra now. I'm going to cue us through it. So clear a space where you can lay on your belly. Shimmy your way down. 
can't find comfort laying on your belly, I encourage you to enroll in my Yoga for Absolute Beginners course. I have an entire lesson on ways you can set yourself up so that way you are comfortable in these belly down postures because there's definitely more than just cobra thing here. So townyoga.com or linked below this video will be a link to that course if you're interested. Now into our cobra pose. So for this posture, your palms are typically underneath the heads of your shoulders and then your elbows hug back to your ribs. So we're going to check in on that. The reason we want the elbows to hug back is so that we're not putting all that pressure on the base of the wrist. Let's see what I mean. Put your palms down on your shoulders and then let your elbows come out really wide like you're trying to point them to the side of the room and let the base of your hand lift away from the mat a little. The wrist is at a pretty funky angle here. So if I was going to put weight in my hands, it would not feel very good. And that's kind of the risk we do to a less extreme when we're putting weight just force it into our hands and we don't really have good alignment for the wrist. So things you can try. First, just try bringing the elbows out wide and then hugging them back to the ribs. And if you can feel like you're pressing the base of your hand and all your fingers down into the mat, then your wrist is probably going to be pretty healthy. But if you're trying to bring your elbows back and it's still lifted and it's just not working, you're maybe a little bit too tight in here, that's fine. Bring your hands a little wider than your shoulders. They're pretty wide shoulders, so for me that's all the way off the mat. And that might be good for you. Or even a little bit in front of the shoulders. And you just want to be able to point your elbows back. And the wrists can be healthy anywhere. And the pose can be taken anywhere without compromising it as long as you can contract the upper back, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to take my palms just a little wider than shoulders and hug the elbows back. And what I like to feel here is my head lifts and we just kind of press our thighs down to the mat for a stable base. As my head lifts, I want to feel my shoulder blades start to draw down to my bum and in together towards each other. So they're drawing back, which is depressing the scapula, and a little together, which is retracting it. And so you have this engagement in the upper back. To test that you're engaging, you might try lifting your palms to hover, and you feel that upper back is definitely working. Mine is definitely working right now. So with the support of the hands, set them down. Feel the elbows hugging back, the whole palm in contact with the mat, and then inhale, start to lift and peel away. Leave the elbows bent, the back of the arm is engaged, and then exhale, slowly peel yourself back down. We're going to take two more before we rest. As you breathe in, draw the shoulders back, start to press into your hands, and now you want to feel the hands press forward as you peel up and back. That's distributing the force all the way through the fingertips. Exhale down one more time. Press down and forward. Inhale up and back, peeling away. And then leave the bend in the elbow. Exhale lower down, resting posture. You can take palms face down under your forehead and relax. Oh, hi, buddy. <laughs> and then we'll slowly lift up. And we're going to take one more round of cobras here with our breath. So slide the palms back underneath your shoulders. Bringing the elbows hugged to the ribs. And you adjust the hands so that you feel those elbows pointing back and the shoulders drawing back and together. I'll do a different hand placement this time. And then inhale, pressing down and forward, lifting up and back. Exhale, lower down. You might even just tap your forehead to the mat. Inhale, lifting head, peeling up. Exhale, lower down, slowly. Inhale, draw back, lift, healthy wrists as you press forward. 
and exhale down. Another rest. Maybe you bring your palms up by your sides and just look off to the side. Let the shoulders relax, the neck relax. And now we're going to press ourselves from cobra up to tabletop to end our practice. So bringing the chin back to center. Bring your hands underneath your shoulder heads. Adjust as needed so that you can feel the whole palm pressing down healthy wrist. The shoulders back and down engaging the upper back. So now we have the principles of cobra in place for your unique body. And we're going to hold at the top so press down and forward inhale up and back hold your cobra for a moment feel that engagement of the upper back and the back of the upper arms this is good tricep work and then to protect the lower back lift your belly button up and lift back up hands and knees and that's where we will end our tutorial on cobra pose today like I said, there's a lot more poses from that belly down posture. So if you want to check out my course, that's a great place. Or if you want something a little more passive than Cobra, Sphinx is another alternative that's more restorative. So instead of that muscular engagement, we kind of gently engage and stay there for a longer time. So if you want more upper back work that's a little bit different, still quite similar, then head on over to a Sphinx tutorial. If I have one up, I'll link that below as well. And thank you for visiting Town Yoga. I hope to see you again.